Hot dudes, everyone. We have a fun little strength day for you guys. We're going to stay in the same kind of format we had last week, uh, working with minute to 30 second rest. So we'll talk about our movements that are coming up your way shortly. Our warm up is going to be pretty straightforward today. We have a sumo stance, good morning for five, wall sit for 30 seconds, dynamic triangle for three to five per side, plank lean for 10 alternating, floor pipe hold for 30 seconds, and a quad plank for 30 seconds. One to three rounds just to kind of give yourself a brief overview of the body, get things heated up and moving really well. If you'd like to do maybe one round and then practice, and do a practice round of each of the exercises just to make sure you're comfortable with the movements, the loading, please do so. I encourage that as much as you need to, depending on how much time you have. The work set today is all on time, so you will do four to six rounds. It really depends on how much time you have uh, working through this work set in terms of your day. We have 60 seconds of dumbbell sumo deadlifts. So basically what you're going to be doing, 60 seconds of steady deadlifts, about 30 seconds one hand, 30 seconds the other hand, just working on transitioning nice and smoothly back and forth. Remembering these are not for time. Everything we do today is going to have a three second eccentric. So we want to try and use the, as much of the minute as we can in terms of moving and getting those good reps. Once we're done our 60 seconds, we move into a 30 second rest. We're going to take down 60 seconds of a dumbbell shoulder press. Two hands or single, it's up to you, depending on what kind of weight you have, or sorry, uh, dumbbell options you have. If you have a single dumbbell, we'll do 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other side. Again, working on that three second eccentric. If you don't have loading that allows you to shoulder press, you can push press instead, but again, keeping to that three second eccentric. 30 seconds of rest. You'll then move into a dumbbell single leg RDL for 60 seconds, 30 seconds per side, 30 second rest, and then a dumbbell floor press for 60 seconds. And you'll take down 30 seconds per side with a single dumbbell, or if you have two, you'll work on 60 seconds steady. Rest 30, do it again, start from the top. So again, we have that lower, upper, lower, upper kind of focus in our work set today. So if you want to have some different loading for each exercise, you're more than welcome to. If you only have access to a single dumbbell, that's fine. Make it work. You'll just get a few more reps in there than you would if you had some heavier dumbbells. So no big deal working on volume and a little bit more hypertrophy for me. Let's warm you up. Let's get you ready to go and have some fun today. All right, let's warm our body up a little bit. We'll take the arms up big and tall. Let's reach it over to one side, big side bent. Come back through, side bent to the other side. We're going to forward fold, touching those toes. From here, we'll walk those shins, we'll come down. Framing a foot, we'll step back into our lizard, nice and square. You take that inside hand all the way to the sky. We're going to rotate forearm to the floor. We're going to come back up, big stretch. Plant that hand on the front foot. Lock the legs and turn the torso. We'll come back to center, lowering the back knee. Press the hip. Come back to center, press the hip, back to center, and press the hip, back to center, straighten out the back leg, turn, back through, inside hands are going to reach up, and we'll rotate, forearm to the floor, as we come back up, planting that hand, we'll step back into our down dog, setting up those shoulders, setting those wrist shoulders, we'll just press the heel, and press the other heel, Coming back into our plank, we're going to come into our other side. Inside hands can reach up to the sky. We're going to rotate forearm to the floor. We'll come back up, big stretch. Plant the hand on that front foot. Walk the legs. We'll turn the torso to the outside hand. Come back to center and lower the knee. Press the hip. Come back to center. Press the hip. Back to center. And press the hip. Center, we'll straighten the leg, turn the torso, come back through, hand on the front foot to reach, and come all the way down, forearm to the floor. Back up to the sky, plant that hand, step back into our down dog, setting up those shoulders, press the heel, press the heel, come back to center, nice plank position, tiptoe those feet up. Roll ourselves all the way up, big stretch, big reach, big reach, oh yeah, come back down, let's get you fired up, alright, let's get you guys
guys ready to go? We'll have some fun, get you warmed up, and we'll see where this takes us today. All right, we're gonna start over here today. We're gonna get our feet into our sumo stance. The first movement on our warm up today is our sumo good morning. So we're gonna get ourselves set up in that nice, slightly wider stance. I'm gonna kind of turn profile so you guys can see. And I have the wall closed for our next exercise, but I'm gonna use the wall today in our, our sumo good morning to use as a target. I'm not necessarily gonna to touch it, but I'm gonna set my glutes, set my ribs, and I'm going to pull my hips to that back wall, keeping my feet flat, and I'm just really pulling those hips back to the wall, and then standing small. That's gonna allow me to get that good hinge as I pull back, that pulls my body forward to that 90 degree, and then we stand up nice and tall and solid. All right, so really pulling back, feeling that good engagement, we get that good position, and we work on that nice hinge position to find those hamstrings. After, we're gonna kinda hit the quads pretty big time, so we're gonna use the wall for our wall sit. So if you don't have a wall that we can kinda go against, you can do a squat hold, but with the wall sit, it just offers a slightly different sensation. So I'm gonna get roughly about a foot away from the wall. From here, my feet are gonna be in my squat stance, normal squat stance with a slight turnout. My shoulders and my hips are gonna be against the wall, and what I'm going to do is slowly slide down using the wall. Knees are gonna track the toes, and I'm gonna take it to about parallel or just above parallel, keeping my head, shoulders, and hips against the wall, feet flat, knees tracking those toes, and that good solid engagement to the glutes as I maintain. To come out of this, I push through the legs using the wall to come up, and then I can come off the wall. Keeping in mind when we hit the range that we want to hit for our, our depth, we don't want to feel negative sensation in the knees. We want to feel the quads turning on and working, perhaps burning out a little bit, but we don't want to feel negative sensation. So adjust your depth, adjust your position in that isometric hold in the wall sit. We got 30 seconds, tackle whatever you need to, accumulate 30 if you need to do smaller sets, but let's come away from the wall and back over to our space. After our wall sits, we're going to get ourselves back in that sumo position. We're going to bring our toe and our toe on an angle. So one toe is pointing straight to the side, the other toe is kind of off in the angle. And we're going to work on our dynamic triangle. So our hand is going to come to our thigh, our arm is going to reach way up to the sky. We're going to squeeze the glutes a bit, pulling into that hip as we find that nice hinge, taking that hand all the way down to the shin, and then rising back up into that overhead position. Regardless of where my torso is in angle, my arm is always reaching to the ceiling. So really focus on that good overhead position, that shoulder position that doesn't move as my body changes positioning. And we wanna make sure we're really focused on that shoulder and that hinge. So take your time with those. They don't need to be fast, all right? And when we transition sides, make sure that our feet are wide enough so that we have the room to get that hinge on the opposite side. Sometimes when we transition, our feet can kind of get a little narrower and we can feel really jammed up. After that, we're gonna get into our plank lean and spend some time on the floor. So I'm gonna get myself into my plank. I'm actually gonna face forward for this one. Hands are under the shoulders, feet are together to make it a little bit more challenging. I'm gonna pull my ribs in, press my shoulders to the sky, and I'm gonna pull with my upper body into that lean. So my upper body initiates that lean as I control side to side. My shoulders stay over top of my hands as I shift, and my body follows. So all I'm trying to do with my midsection is just pull those ribs and hips in, get that good hollow, and kind of pulling that sternum and belly button together, that little line of action here as I get that engagement. But we're letting the body follow the shoulders. So the shoulders initiate, the body follows. It's not the hips that does the shift, the upper body shifts, and everything kind of follows as we go. So really focus on that tight midsection as we work on that good push to the ceiling. After that, we're gonna work on our floor pike hold. So our floor pike hold comes into our tabletop as our knees come together, our toes are curled under, and I'm gonna establish the core position first. So I'm gonna pull my ribs in, press my shoulders up a bit, and I'm gonna maintain this engagement through the upper back. From here, I'm gonna straighten my legs out as I push my hips up, keeping my shoulders over my hands. And I'm gonna push into the floor, grip the ground, act the 
perfectly pushed to the sky with those arms the entire time. So my shoulders by my ears, getting that good active handstand position. If I feel my shoulders or my core disengaged, I want you to come out of that movement, reset, and then bank more time there. So accumulate 30 seconds in that floor pipe hold. Don't just hold it to get the whole time if your shoulders disengage or your core disengages. Next, we come into our quad plank, which shares that tabletop position, except we space out the knees a bit. The toes are curled under, pull my ribs in, I press my shoulders up, and I'm gonna lift my knees about an inch. So I'm pulling everything kind of in towards each other, so I'm pulling my hand back towards my knee and my toes towards my fingers. They're not gonna move because they're connected to the floor, but you are gonna feel a slightly different pull through that core position if you pull everything in towards that center. It doesn't change or arch your back at all or round your back at all, but what it's gonna do is give you that sensation of that compression through the midsection. So we're just gonna hold that quad plank again for 30 seconds. If you feel the shoulders disengage, the core turn off, perhaps you start to arch your back, all right? Come out of it, take a moment, maybe give yourself cat cow curls, cat push up, and then reset that position and bank that time again and get into that accumulation of 30 seconds. As a quick recap for you guys, we have Sumo stance, good morning for five. Wall sit for 30 seconds or squat hold. Dynamic triangle for three to five per side. Plank lean for 10 alternating. Floor pipe hold for 30 seconds and a quad plank for 30 seconds. Nice opportunity to kind of touch on the body, get everything we need to get primed up for what we have coming up in our work set. So pause the video, rock that, get that going, one to three rounds. Like I said earlier, if you want to do like one or two rounds and then move into a little practice round of each of the movements to make sure you're comfortable with them, please do so. That's what we're going to do right now is review those key movements in our work set before we start the actual work set. All right. So what we got for you guys, we have some sumo deadlifts, shoulder press, single leg RDL, and some floor press. So my suggestion would be do a little practice round. And the practice round doesn't have to be a full round of work. You could either do it time-wise, you could do 30 seconds per movement with a little 15 second rest. You could do three to five reps of each movement, just to feel the movements, make sure you're comfortable. And if you need to spend a little bit more time warming up the specific movement, please take the time to do so to make sure you're ready for when you start the four to six rounds and start that time. So we're gonna start off with the sumo deadlift. I have my dumbbell here and we're gonna work on a single arm sumo deadlift. If you have two dumbbells, you can do it with two dumbbells, but in the most part we can use, use the one. If we're using two, obviously you just hold two to the center. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand over top of this dumbbell. And it's gonna kinda cut my foot in half. So I'm standing right over top of it in my sumo slash kinda squat stance. Standing tall, I'm gonna hold the hips back and down, keeping the knees going out. And it's a little longer range of motion. So my hips are gonna come down a little bit more. But my back position is strong and solid. My chest is high, I'm gonna push through those legs, standing tall. Now if I had two dumbbells, I would just hold them together and work on that position with two dumbbells instead of the one. If you'd like to go that way, you can. But with the single, we just kinda take it back and down. We're using that three second eccentric, so that floor position, or whatever that floor position happens to be. We're looking at getting the dumbbell somewhere below the knee so that we can feel that hamstring kick on and we can work on our body position. I don't want you going so deep to the floor that if you're going, 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 my back position's good, 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 and then all of a sudden it rounds out because I can't get to the floor. I don't want you going to the floor. Just take it to where you can maintain that good, strong back position the entire time. So we want to make sure that back position nice and straight. If I had a PVC up my spine, it would touch my head, shoulder, and hip. From there, we'll do 60 seconds of sumo deadlifts, 15 seconds per, or sorry, 30 seconds per hand, or if you're using two dumbbells, you'll just work that three second eccentric on the way down, normal stand-up. You'll get 30 seconds of rest, and then we're gonna move into the shoulder press. So again, you can do this with two dumbbells if you have access to two dumbbells. You can do it with one, and you'll do 30 seconds per hand. 
So with this position, my feet are under my hips or slightly outside my hips. My elbows in my good front rack position and the back of the dumbbells pressing or sorry, resting on my shoulder. I'm pressing into the dumbbell a little bit to keep my midsection in, engaged and solid and keep a little activeness on the dumbbell. And then from here, I'm gonna work on that strict press, straight up overhead. Then I'll come back down to three seconds central. Now from the side, that overhead position, my knees tight, ribs in, I press. That overhead position puts that arm slightly behind my ear. So just slightly behind or even with the ear, depending on what my shoulder mobility will allow. Now, what we want to think about also is when we press overhead, that elbow is nice and locked out to the best of our ability, and we work on bringing the dumbbell down in the same position. If the dumbbell you have at home is too heavy to shoulder press and you don't have access to anything else, that's okay. We can work on a good push press so we get the dip, drive, and then we work the three, two, one, down, a little pause. Dip, push, three, two, one, down. So the eccentric is on the lowering of the dumbbell, regardless of push press or shoulder press. So the push press will just allow you to get a little bit of hip action going if we have that heavy dumbbell, all right, that we can't shoulder press, but then we're gonna still work on that slow, controlled lower. If we are doing push press in the work set, I don't want you to link them. I want them to be nice individual reps. So as soon as the dumbbell hits the shoulder, breath and set, push press. Come down, breath set, push press. Just so we're not using momentum in between reps. Now with this again, with the shoulder press or push press, if you have a single dumbbell, you'll do 30 seconds per hand, or you'll do two dumbbells for 60 seconds, working on that three second set. Rest 30 seconds, we move into our single leg RDL with the dumbbell. So we can hold the dumbbell in a multitude of places. Today for this single, single leg RDL, we can hold it to the front, we can hold it on the leg that's kickstanding, we can hold it on the leg that's doing the work, or we can hold two, all right? So if we have two, we're just keeping it square and taking both hands down. Now, regardless of where we hold the dumbbell, our movement and our hinge is the same. Right, so preferably today, I would like you to keep that toe down so we can focus on our hinge, especially since we're loading this. So standing tall, I'm gonna hold the dumbbell off to the side, but that's, again, it doesn't really matter where I'm holding the dumbbell in terms of my hinge. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, I'm gonna pull back at the hip crease as I keep the dumbbell close to my body, I take the dumbbell to my knee or just below, and I push through that leg and stand. Dumbbell, same concept, I do not have to touch the floor. Our primary concern is getting that good hinge, pulling back, maintaining that good deadlift back position that we practice in our sumo deadlift. So if I attached a PVC to you, head, shoulder, hip would be touching that PVC pipe the entire time we do that hinge. Now if you struggle with that movement, you can do this without loading, but today I'd like you to try it with some load just to kind of feel that sensation. But again, range of motion is kind of secondary to that back position. So if you're finding that you're like, yeah, I can get to just above the knee oh, with that good back position, that's okay. Take it there, maintain position. Primary focus is that good back position. Once we're done 30 seconds per side, we're gonna move into a 30 second rest and then we're gonna do our floor press. So our dumbbell floor press, again, like the shoulder press, can be executed with two dumbbells or one. If we're doing a single, we'll do 30 seconds per side. If we're doing a double, we'll just do double for 60 seconds. So my dumbbell is gonna be close to my body. My setup on the floor though, my feet are gonna be just outside my fingers, so like we're gonna set up a bridge. I'm gonna bring my elbows into a, nine, or a 45 degree from my body angle. So I, if you're looking at me from directly overhead, I would look like an arrow pointing that way with my head being the tip of the arrow. Now when I hold the dumbbell, the dumbbell is gonna be stacked over top of my elbow, so my wrist is gonna stay stacked the entire time. And if I'm doing a single, I'll use this empty hand and I'll press it against the floor just to keep myself stable and engaged. I have a natural 
the lumbar curve, so my back is not pressing against the floor, but I am keeping my ribs kind of neutral. Now as I press, the dumbbell is going to finish over my shoulder, and then when I come back down, three seconds lower, it's going to finish by my stern. I push, finish over the shoulder, finish, or start, sorry, by my stern. I'm going to work through that good pressure, that good push, and just work that nice smooth press with that three second center. Now it's very common, I'm going to turn this way so you guys can see my arm. It's very common that sometimes we let that dumbbell collapse on the arm. So we really have to focus on keeping that wrist stacked over top of the dumbbell, not collapsing to the chest. Now, just so you guys can see from the top, if I was, if you were looking from that top view, that bird's eye view, my arms are about this nice 45 degree, allows me a nice angle, gives me a nice kind of selection of tricep and chest involvement in that floor press as I get that position in, all right? So we don't want to be up here in a T, we don't want to be super tight, we're comfortable on that nice 45 degree. Taking our time, working on that good position. Now, once we're done 30 seconds per side or 60 seconds with both, we'll do a 30 second rest, pop to the top of the movement chart, and do it again, four to six rounds. So there's a lot of work involved here and it does take some time. Each round is about six minutes long, so keep that in mind as we're going through this work set. What I did when I was doing some Zoom classes with this last week though, so this could actually work out really well for you guys, when you're doing single arm work, so say you only have one dumbbell, and I'm doing my shoulder press. Bam. All right. 30 seconds hits. Give yourself about 10 seconds to transition the dumbbell so you can shake the arm out, clean it up, set, and then you get a full 30 seconds on the other side. So you give yourself about a 10 second transition uh, in between sides so both arms get a nice full 30 second set of work, if you'd like. If you don't, just set that minute timer. Transition doesn't take too long, all right? But if you wanna have that 10 second kind of transition, please do so. It kind of helps whenever we're doing those single leg RDLs, when we're doing a foot kind of change, that 10 seconds gives you enough time that you can change your foot position, get yourself set, and you don't feel rushed to get into that good solid position. So if you wanna do that 10 second transition between sides, I heavily endorse it. It worked out really well on the Zoom class uh, when we did it uh, in those classes on the day. So as a quick recap, four to six rounds, however much volume slash time you have, please keep that in mind. We have our dumbbell sumo deadlift for 60 seconds, rest 30 seconds, dumbbell shoulder press for 60 seconds or push press, rest 30 seconds, dumbbell single leg RDL, 60 seconds, 30 seconds per leg, rest 30 seconds, Dumbbell floor press, 60 seconds, rest 30 seconds, repeat. Each movement and each rep will have a three second eccentric, which is a three second lower uh, in the movement. So it's gonna be slow tempo on the way down and a nice smooth press. I'm looking forward to hearing about how this goes, you guys. Let me know if you use the same weight, different loading, all right? Let me know how it goes, two dumbbells, one dumbbell. But as always, you guys have fun with this strength work, work for quality, and enjoy. It's a nice way to slow some things down before we ramp things up later on in the week. See you tomorrow for some more fun. That heart rate's gonna get a little higher tomorrow, so be prepared. Bye, you guys.